Hey everybody, Adam Marivo's Vox here with the Geek Network, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Elementary OS, which is a Linux variant based on the Ubuntu base, inside of a virtual box. So you will need two things for this video. You will need virtual box installed and an ISO relevant to you of Elementary OS. Links to both of these will be in the description below. I have them gathered right here on my desktop. First and foremost, open up VirtualBox, if you don't have it open already. Okay, inside of VirtualBox, go ahead and hit New, and we're going to call it Elementary. And then under Type, go ahead and select Linux, and we're going to do Ubuntu 64-bit, because that's kind of what it's based on. Next, we have to decide how much memory to give it. Obviously, this is going to be based on how much memory you have in your computer. My machine has 32 gigabytes, so I'm going to have no trouble allocating 8 gigabytes of RAM to this virtual machine to make sure it runs better. Obviously, up to a certain point, more memory in a machine is going to run better, but you also want to stay within the confines of what your computer can support and still operate efficiently as well. I'm going to hit next. Recommended hard drive size is 8 gigabytes. We're going to create a new virtual hard drive for this. We're going to hit create. VirtualBox disk image is fine. Hit next. We'll do dynamically allocated just to be on the safe side. We're going to give it 12 gigs. We're going to put it back on that solid state drive. We'll call it elementary two. Click save, click create and let it do its thing. Once it's finished making your disk, you're almost good to go to start it up, but first, we're gonna take a look at the settings. So right click, go to settings, or click the little gear up here. Make sure all this is good. Under system, I'm going to uncheck floppy, because there's no reason for it to think that there is a floppy disk in the drive. All of this should be relatively good. Processor, I'm going to give it four cores. I have an eight core processor, so I'm giving it half of my processor. If you have a dual or quad core CPU, you'll give it one or two cores based on that. Since it's a virtual machine, you're not going to get a whole heck of a lot of speed out of this, but it's good to have just in case as many cores as you can allocate. As you can see, it goes in the red here, so you don't want to give it more than half of your cores, or like I said, with the RAM, your, the rest of your computer is going to slow down. I'm going to enable PAE and X, and then under acceleration, I'm going to make sure those are checked. Under display, I'm going to allocate as much VRAM as it lets me. I have a 4 gigabyte graphics card, but the most virtual boxes seem to allow is 128 megs. Since I do have a high-end graphics card, I'm going to enable 3D and 2D acceleration. However, if you, if you end up with a lot of visual trouble, like graphics lag and things like that in your virtual box, you will want to disable those. Remote display and video capture should be disabled. Under storage, under our disk drive for our CD optical drive, we're going to want to choose our ISO for our ROM, which as you may have noticed, I saved to my desktop. It's right here. Elementary OS stable AMD 64 2013 August 10th. I feel like that's an old one, but that's ex that's okay. Make sure that's loaded up. Hit audio. Make sure enables enable audio is accepted or else you're not going to have any audio network that should be fine serial ports you don't need usb make sure usb is enabled of course and then shared folders if you want the computer to be or the virtual box to be able to access folders from your computer you can set that up i'm not going to set that up until i get the full operating system installed do as you will here all right we're going to go ahead and start up the virtual machine by clicking start it will take a minute to boot up here for the first time and go into the virtual BIOS. And it's going to load very similar initial menu to Ubuntu. Like I said, it is based on the Ubuntu builds. But it's supposed to be a lot nicer to use. Elementary OS. Just let it do its thing until you get to an interactive screen. Don't interrupt it or you're going to cause yourself some trouble. Alright, here it pops up the typical live CD Ubuntu menu. You can either try it out, which you could do in the virtual box, although it's not exactly necessary, or you can just install it, which is what we're going to do here. You'd really only try it if you're doing it natively in an actual computer. I'm going to click Install Elementary OS. 
We have at least 4.4 gigs of space, that's why you want to make sure you give it as much space as possible. You can download updates while installing, but that will make the install process take very long, especially over a virtual machine. So it's best in the virtual machine, honestly, to wait until it's installed and then install updates within the OS. I'm going to go ahead and install 30 third party software just so it's working out of the box. This is mostly just MP3 audio support. It can't automatically include that. That has to be a user decision as it's third party licenses. Click continue. All right, here it's going to detect that there's no operating systems installed on your virtual box. That's because we just created the hard drive. So we're going to erase disk and install elementary OS. It's going to format it as it deems necessary. Here it determines there's a 10.7 gigabyte VBox hard disk. Install. It's going to use the X4 operating or er, file system structure for the hard drive, which is fine because that's what Linux uses. And this is a virtual box, so it doesn't matter what it's formatted at anyway. Then click install now. Some of the partitions you've created are too small. Please make the following partitions at least this large. Continue. We have a 10.7 gigabyte partition. I believe our partitions are just fine. Thank you. Where are you? We are... New York is close enough. Hit continue. English US, English US. Obviously choose your choice based on where you are. This is fine for me. Your name. Epos Vox. I call this Sherlock V Box. I may install this on a natively on a computer later on, so I want Sherlock available. Pick a username, Epos Vox. Pick a password, okay. Just something basic for a virtual machine. Log in automatically. If you're doing it on a native, on a physical computer, you would want to probably require the password to log in, but that would just be a pain in the butt for a virtual, virtual box and totally not necessary. So I'm going to just log in automatically, hit continue, and then we have our install process. Next, you get to installation is complete. Please restart the computer. Click restart now. And yes, to those wondering, it's totally safe to do a software restart inside a virtual box. Hit enter when it asks you to remove the CD from the tray since we're not using a CD, but we are going to go to settings, storage, make sure this is empty. It is reading empty, so we're good, but just had to make sure it should automatically do that. But otherwise, it's going to boot back to the CD and then we are booted into the operating system here. So this is what we want. And basically you can take it from there if you would like. However, we can also go ahead and install some updates real quick. So we can go over here, make sure we're connected to the network and then we'll pull up. Midori is the web browser that it launches with. Make sure it loads Elementary's website and boom, Elementary is right here in this lovely looking OS. Head over to Software Center, see how that looks looking pretty good now it will still be a bit scaled until we get resolution set up right but if you'd like to view it in full screen mode hit host f which for me is right control or go to switch to full screen and then you'll have to hit right your host key which for me is right control again to actually get out of full screen i'm gonna go over here to system settings displays and that is all the resolution we get until we get the drivers going all right, to get that graphical support, we will need to first install a package. This typically comes with Ubuntu and Linux Mint. However, with this distribution, it may not. So open up a terminal and type in sudo apt-git, and I will post the command in the description below or on screen or something, install DKMS, which stands for Dynamic Kernel Management System, and then hit enter, type in your password, and it's going to load the packages that need to be installed. So hit Y and then enter for do you want to continue? It's going to download the packages and install them and you're good to go. Now go ahead and hit close on your terminal window. Now over on your menu bar for VirtualBox, which since I'm in full screen, it's at the bottom here, but it may be at the top if you're not in full screen. Go to devices and install guest editions CD image or insert guest edition CD image. All right, once you've told it to insert the CD image, you're gonna see down here under devices, if you go to application and files, 
under devices, you're going to see the VBox Editions ISO. Okay, go ahead and open up a terminal window. All right, in your terminal window, type in sudo and drag in the VBox Linux Editions run file and hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and load up your installer. There it's referencing the DKMS kernel module that we had to install earlier. It has to be installed beforehand or it won't be able to recognize it properly. We can go ahead and close, well actually, we'll leave this open. Wait for the terminal window to do its thing. It's got to install a bunch of extra software and drivers into your virtual machine. And once it's done, you can close out your terminal window, eject the VirtualBox Editions ISO, and go ahead and restart your virtual machine. Just hit power, shut down, and restart. And as you can see, for me at least, the VirtualBox is now running in full 1080p, though the frame rate of this recording may be a bit choppy as I'm having compatibility issues. If it's not running that for you, go ahead and open up your system settings and go to displays and check your resolution and you should have whatever resolution options are available for your display. Mine's at 1920 by 1080. We've got VirtualBox here. We're good to go. We're gonna hit apply, keep this configuration. And suddenly we have a very nice looking elementary OS for you to play around with and do what you want. To update the OS, go to Applications, and I simply typed in Updater in the search bar and ran the first option. And open pops the Software Updater box, which will update your operating system, the software on it, the drivers, etc. They should all be selected by default, though you can kind of scroll through them and see which ones you would want to install. And hit Install Updates, and just type in your password. and let it do its thing, as I've said five million times before. And then you're ready to start using your elementary OS once it's finished. That's all it takes, really. Hope this video helped you. Let me know if you liked it in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you disliked it, a comment telling me, like I said, what you thought. And if you'd like to see more tutorials regarding elementary OS and what you can do with it and things like that, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm going to be experimenting with it quite a bit and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. So it's going to be good and then eventually maybe I'll get it running on its own dedicated box. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe and check out links to the description below where you can contribute to our Patreon campaign and things like that. And otherwise guys, I'll catch you in a future video. My name is Adam Eples Vox, manager of Geek, the Geeky Network. <laughs>